Here's a picture of my friend Mike's barn. He had this built in the summer of 2008. On the side of the barn he had a cement slab poured where he wanted to place his LT40 sawmill. He asked me to design a barn addition for his LT40 sawmill and he gave me the specifications of no posts and where the mill would sit and 24 foot opening so he could roll long logs in. The green box in this picture represents the area where there could be no timbers in his timber frame building. Here is a view from the back side where the shed roof would connect to the existing barn. Although this this area is shown with walls, there are no walls in the sawmill area. Here's a picture of the frame that I designed and the, some parts of the existing frame of the barn that he had built. Next he bought some l lumber and timbers from a local sawmill. On the left is the rafters in the middle are the posts and plates and girts and brace stock and in the space inside the barn we cut all the joints for all of the timbers and erected the frame. Here the carpenters who erected the existing barn are putting on the common rafters and the roof sheathing. In this picture you can see the back plate along the long side of the shed roof which was 56 feet long it required several scarfs to join all of those timbers together. Each post has opposing braces going left and right. All of the timbers were east and white pine except for the very biggest ridge timber to carry the rafter load which was Douglas fir. The braces were east and white pine and the pegs were red oak. The first winter after the roof was on we had a very heavy snow load and ice storm and this is just a picture showing the snow on the roof over the 24 foot opening you can see in the trees in the background the damage the snow did to the trees in his yard. Here's another picture of the snow load on the roof of the shed roof over his edger in the back side of the open building. That's Mike's barn. Recently there was a discussion about braces on the forestry forum and their effectiveness in supporting the load of a plate. Here is a drawing of that plate on Mike's barn on the last post showing the standard three foot brace layout peg hole spacing inch and a half off the shoulder two inches off the bearing end and the brace length of four foot two which is fifty inches and fifteen sixteenths below that drawing is the layout of the brace itself for cutting it to fit into that section. The comment that was made that I take a little exception to was that in green timber the subse that subsequently dries they are effectively worthless 
he's talking about the braces. They are only as good as the peg. There is no bearing. The post shrinks in width. The angle on the shrinking brace becomes acute so that the first point of contact in racking situation is a small pointed toe which then needs to compress the wood till it becomes wide enough to bear the load. Draw boring only means it has pulled the loose brace into contact think about what has happened is not in full bearing it is not bottomed at best the peg is what would take the load the bearing surfaces have left the area the sheathing does the real bracing on open structures there really isn't much there he suggests try an experiment Build a Y brace T out of green timbers. A post with a section of beam. Make the braces tight and well fitted, but don't peg them. Peg the post and the beam. Check it in a few years later. And the oak, in oak, you can slide the braces around about a half an inch. To make that structural, you would need to drive in wedges into the brace mortises either the posts or the beam or both yep I'm here with Mike this is Jim Rogers and we're inspecting his frame and down this side as we can see 56 feet long this plate for his saw barn has eight by eight posts and four by six braces, three foot on center, uh, three foot layout, fifty and fifteen sixteenths. These joints were cut twelve years ago, and the brace is solid. That's number one. Mike, check number two. Solid. Nothing's loose. Number three. Down here is number four. There's actually 13 braces. Three foot braces in this frame. Every single one of them solid. None of them are loose. That's a nice fit to that housing. That's a nice fit to that housing. The plates were eight by 10. The posts are eight by eight. Well, it sounds a little different, but it's not loose. That one's a little bit open right there, but this side is tightened right up. One inch oak pegs, and as I mentioned, 56 feet long. This one's so, a little open, but that's because it's on a bladed scarf. Yep. Yeah. This one. And that noise is because this thing is, look at the split right here. You've got a big split. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So this was erected 12 years ago. If it's an inch a year for oak to dry, these 8 by 8s should be dry. Four inches from each side would be four years. It's been 12 years. That's an 8 by 10 plate, so that should be dry. Nothing is loose. There's 13 braces in this frame, and none of them are loose. Thank you very much. It is my opinion, based on this tour of Mike's 12-year-old saw barn frame, that the braces did not shrink one half inch at all and that all are not loose in their mortises and are still doing the job that they're supposed to do in that open frame with no sheathing for assistance. Joints, especially braces, need to be cut accurately in green timbers. When green timbers do dry, 
they do shrink a fraction but when the joints are cut correctly the frame will still be strong. The end.